Hello, and congratulations on completing Unit 1. Now I'd like to introduce you to where we'll be headed in Unit 2. We'll be taking an abrupt right-hand turn. Uh, and to introduce Unit 2, let me actually say a couple of things about the first unit. In this first unit, of course, we uh, rhetorically analyzed texts and we built arguments. And we looked at the rhetorical appeals and we talked about things like building strong arguments, making sure your arguments are logical, uh, thinking about the effectiveness of language with regard to how you relate to audience, uh, credibility, etc. And the thinking here is that these were kind of universal uh, approaches to texts, to the way that people communicate. So you could look at any sort of text and you, should, you could start to analyze uh, the strength of the argument that's taking shape and how it functioned rhetorically. Uh, but this, 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 this universal uh, approach kind of undergirded what we were doing. Uh, and in a sense, things were a little bit black and white. Well, now uh, I want to put things in color a little bit. And what I mean by that is that uh, I want to move away from these universals and I want to start to investigate language in specific environments. And so we're going to talk about this concept of discourse. And now this is a pretty heady concept. Uh, and so I think it's probably best to use an analogy to get into it. And we can almost think of the analogy of the stereotype. So for example, if I asked you, what's the stereotype of a barista? It's likely that you'd be able to tell me things about how the barista dresses, how they act, how they speak, etc. And so really, uh, I'm not interested in the pejorative use of uh, the language of stereotypes. I'm interested in the idea that what happens is that we start to see patterns uh, when we investigate how language works in specific environments. And so for us, we're going to operate under this definition that people use language and other symbol systems, excuse me, uh, dress, gestures, clothing, etc., in order to say things, to do things, and to be things, to have an identity. Uh, and so uh, that's the foundation for how we're going to begin Unit 2. And I know that that might not clarify as much, so it may be easier uh, if we think of some specific examples. And you can see these pictures kind of floating around me. Well, uh, we talked about the barista, but you can think about even your own academic disciplines, right? So in chemistry, for, for example, there's a certain way that you have to speak. There's a certain way that you have to act, a certain way that you have to be. Uh, and that's what we're interested in. Um, in the hip-hop environment, there's a certain way that you speak, a certain way that you act, a certain way that you are. And all of that stuff combined gives us the discourse of the hip-hopper, or the discourse of the chemistry student, or the discourse of the barista. And it gets even bigger than that. Uh, you can see what I put on the document uh, behind me. Uh, you can think about how you are with your family and with your peer groups. Uh, you can think how people are within organizations like sports. There's a way to be an NBA player. Uh, you can think about the academic disciplines. You can think about how people act and speak within certain workplaces. You can think about the social media environment, right? We've got YouTubers now. You can even think about how people are with regard to larger cultural conversations. So for example, there's a certain discourse around how we talk about sexual ed in the United States. There's a discourse that surrounds how we talk about politics in the US right now. Right? All of these discourses are, are really us seeing the patterns within specific environments and then starting to see how people use language and those other symbol systems in order to say things, in order to do things, and in order to be things, to have an identity. And so that's where we're headed. I hope that this clarifies a little bit. And what I'm asking you to do uh, is to take a look at this short reading uh, by James Gee, and I've provided it to you. And as you look at that reading, uh, I want you to think of some key takeaways there. And so the first one I want you to consider is that understanding language means understanding the world. And so a quick example of that would be something like, if we think about that barista, uh, and we think about when we order a drink, and we say, yeah, I'd like a cup of coffee, the barista seldom just stops there. They often say, uh, would you like anything else? Uh, do you need something to eat with that? And so that language, right? Would you like anything else? Do you want something to eat with that? That language uh, gives us an understanding of the world. And by world in that case, what we mean is that everything becomes contextualized. The barista doesn't say that because they're necessarily really sincerely interested uh, in our desire to eat something. 
They say it because they're obviously working in a business and because they're working in a business, that business demands that they try to upsell products. And so part of that upsell is to ask that question. So when we understand language, we're understanding the world behind where that language comes from. Uh, another point to think about as you work through the reading is this idea that discourses disappear and appear. Uh, two easy examples, right? Uh, hundreds of years ago, we had witches. There was the discourse of witches. Well, we no longer have that discourse. Of course, we now have the discourse of uh, YouTubers and vloggers and the rest of it. And so, uh, so they come into being and they go out. And so we're going to be interested in how that happens. Uh, and then finally, as you look through this reading, you're going to see this uh, distinction between uh, discourse with a little d and discourse with a big d. And it gets a little abstract there. And so uh, let me try to simplify it as much as I can. When we think of the big d discourse, which is really what we're interested in, we're interested in how uh, people within specific environments use language, and we're interested in how these other symbol systems come into play. Uh, how the clothing works, how objects are used, how they use gestures, etc. Little d means we're only looking at language. So I hope that clarifies a bit as you get into the reading. In fact, I hope all of this clarifies a little bit uh, because getting into this discourse conversation can be really interesting and it can actually be pretty fun. Hope that helps. Take care.